You might have heard about the Mark III extrusion problem, but is it a mountain or just a molehill? In case you didn't know, there's been some recent controversy in the Mark III community. There had been a few murmurs on online communities for the Mark III, such as the Facebook groups and forums. They claimed there was inconsistent extrusion and that was adding artifacts to vertical walls. Things really exploded, however, when an issue was posted on the Prusa Research GitHub. User ff 8 jake posted to the GitHub as an issue on the 6th of April, calling them out in a very public way. In this video, we're going to examine the issue, we're going to look at the two sides of the debate, and then we're going to look at a range of samples from my Mark III as well as other 3D printers to see just how bad the problem is. Now, this is quite a technical problem, and I won't be going into depth looking at all the possible things it could be. There's already an excellent video on the channel CRT which does exactly this. I'll leave a link in the description and I urge you to check it out. I've also designed and printed this custom part to try and examine up close and see if the issue is more or less likely to occur on certain geometries. Let's get started. Okay, so here's where it all officially started. 6th of April, a post was put up on the GitHub and here's what it said. Basically, it called them out for having this inconsistent extrusion issue and under the right lighting, parts that otherwise looked okay all of a sudden became terrible. Now, some of these I think don't look too bad, but then other ones like this are quite poor. I'd be pretty annoyed if my prints were coming out like that. As we scroll through, it's got a range of examples and then other people start commenting up with their own experiences and there's quite a few people experiencing this issue. Some worse than others, but definitely some disappointing results here. Now, one of the points they make is that from looking from straight on, like in this picture here, it doesn't actually look like anything's wrong. But once you have the lighting from above, the problems reveal themselves. I personally would say that one's not too bad. It's quite uniform. But then some of the other ones on here are quite poor. This one's got some big gaps in it. And if we come down a little lower, we can see some that have some banding and some that are in particular quite rough. There's one coming up of cat and it's quite nasty, that bit there. So this GitHub issue post was one place where the debate raged on. Quite often someone would come in and say, it's clearly this problem, to which everyone else would reply, well, we've tested that and no, it's not. And the effort the community has put in to try and isolate this has been quite impressive. However, there's still been quite a bit of division to the point where Joseph Prusher himself had to take to Twitter and acknowledge the issue a little over a month later. All 30 devs are onto it, but until I have a solution, doing an announcement is pointless. Thank you for your support. And then if we scroll down here, we can see once again, it's divisive because some people are defending him, saying that they're thankful that he's on the case. Other people are saying, no, he's too important. He doesn't really care. So forth, it gets into a bit of a swearing argument and so on. So if I may try and summarize the issue. Basically, it's believed there is inconsistent extruder performance and this is creating artifacts on the vertical walls. There's a lot of debate over whether it's mechanical or whether it's temperature related or something in the firmware, but Prusa himself has acknowledged it and claimed they have a great deal of resources going into fixing it. Like I said, it's quite a divisive debate and there's two sides to the argument. On one side, you have the people claiming that Prusa does not care about the community, they're not acknowledging it, and they're not putting in anywhere enough effort to fix the printer. Basically, they're saying that they've been abandoned and they're quite upset about it. On the other side of the fence, you've got the people saying that Prusa is putting in a good amount of effort and it's not that bad a problem after all. And these people are generally more interested in trying to test and work through solutions and try and find something that's best for everyone. Now, as with most conflicts in life, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle, but it still gets me thinking, do I have the issue? Now, just for reference, my Mark III has just passed one kilometer of filament used and 465 hours of printing. That's about double what it was when I did my initial review. And I probably would use it a little bit more, except for the fact that I've been spending a lot of time modifying and testing my Cocoon Create Touch. Looking at a number of my prints so far, I reckon I have the issue on some of them, but really not that many. So what I'm going to do is put the prints underneath the close-up camera and compare it to some other prints from other printers that I've done. Everything you see here is with the lighting from above and filmed to show it up as bad as possible. Now this first benchy on my Mark III I think looks pretty good, as does this test cube. I did have some prints however that weren't so nice. This trigger handle was printed at 10,000 millimeters per minute 
This was when I was experimenting with Linear Advance and it definitely has an uneven surface. The video where I 3D scanned my wife and printed her out, I did that one pretty fast as well and once again it has an uneven surface, probably my worst one. For comparison's sake, here's a similar file printed on the Cocoon Create Touch and it doesn't have the best surface quality although it's pretty uniform. Mark 3 piece of Lego, compared once again to the Cocoon Create Touch, I reckon they're both pretty good here, but always going to have some degree of artifacts on a layer by layer process. The comparison with test cubes, on the left the Mark 3, on the right the Cocoon Create Touch. The pattern on the right can be tuned out by adjusting the stepper motor voltage. Here we have a print for comparison's sake on my Solder Little 2. At the time it had a dodgy ball screw and that introduced Z wobble the whole way up each vertical surface. Now we have a part not printed by me. Before E3D had an injection molded part, they had these printed fan mounts. And this one, let me tell you, is rough. To finish another part not printed for me, this is how it came on my Emblazer 1 laser cutter. And this one's pretty good quality, although on the upper surface there is a little bit of Z artifacts. Now compared to some of those other prints from the other printers, I'd say the Mark III generally stacks up pretty well, in my case at least. The prints where I think that I'm showing something like the problem are generally the ones where I was printing really, really fast, 10,000 millimeters per minute, and that was when I was testing for linear advance. Of those prints, the ones where we have organic round surfaces and they're not necessarily vertical walls, but curved walls, that's where it seems to show up the most. I wanted to go further for this video, however, and that's why I designed this part. This part has all sorts of different geometry to try and show up what it could possibly be and it was also printed with three different speeds. Let me talk you through it. Here is the finished part in on shape. I'll show you how I made it. I first started by using the Spurgy plugin and if I show this here and hide the final one you'll see that it creates a lovely Spurgy. What I was aiming to do was to create a really detailed section that had some straight edges, some harsh turns, some rounded inner radiuses, just a little bit of a mix of everything. And then what I did after that was to create a sketch that built on from that and contained a number of different features as well. I wanted some long travel moves on this axis. I wanted some long travel moves on this axis. I wanted some short ones. I wanted some 90 degree turns that had to use both X and Y. I wanted some curves, both outer and inner. I wanted some sharp direction changes followed by some curves. Basically, I was trying to put as much as I could into one set of geometry to get some bang for my buck. So here it is printed in all of its glory. It took just under eight hours. And although some of the other filaments are a little bit unknown in the quality, this one was printed with X3D PLA, which I've measured and has great tolerances. So it's quite high quality. Let's have a look at this underneath the microscope. Firstly, can I say I regret printing this in white because it's so hard to film it. But anyway, let's get on with the analysis. Now you can see that there's definite banding across the surface and that coincides roughly with where Simplify 3D was told to change its speed. Anyway, this is the long wall for the X axis and you can't really see anything going on, nor can you see any type of artifacts on this vertical surface here, which has a small external fillet onto the Y axis. And once again, you can see your two marks where the speed changes, but apart from that, I can't really notice anything. Now the outside of the spur gear, once again, pretty clear. This was designed to provoke some sort of artifact with lots of fast movements around the perimeter, but it seems to have come through pretty well. On the other side, we have a 90 degree bend, but neither of them are parallel with the X or Y axis. And once again, can't particularly see any type of problems. Some short surfaces on the X and Y on the back. Once again, we can see our two bands and that was exacerbated on that long part because it peeled up off the bed. The top and bottom surfaces are pretty good. Overall, I'd say this is a pretty nice print. Well, hopefully the camera picked that up well, but I'd have to say this one seems to be pretty perfect. The only thing where there's artifacts is where it changed its speed. So roughly 15 millimeters apart in three bands. So I thought that was pretty interesting that something that I added in Simplify 3D could show up in the final part. The only other part where there are some issues is where it peeled off the bed in one corner. So some of the bits down this skinny end are a little bit compressed and that's to be expected. It's going to make inconsistent Z heights and that's going to squish or stretch out the filament depending on where it is. All right, wrapping up my two cents. Firstly, I have to say that I don't seem to really have the problem. I've only had it on a couple of prints and they were prints where I was really, really pushing the speed. Now, I'm not suggesting that anyone that has the issue is simply printing too fast. It seems like a much more complicated problem than that. All I'm saying is that perhaps I'm one of the lucky ones. 
For me, I mainly print functional parts. I don't often print things that need to be visually perfect. So I care more about dimensional accuracy. And I feel like my Mark III is dialed in really well for that. I know what the tolerances are. So if I want something to fit, I design that into my CAD model and then it pretty much prints perfectly first time. Things with trapped nuts and clearance holes to put bolts through, they just tend to work. So that's really good for me. I can, however, understand other people being quite disgruntled by having this problem, particularly some of the ones who had it worse than others in the GitHub thread. Whatever side of the fence you're sitting on, I hope you'll agree that it's quite a fascinating issue. I think it's quite amazing that 30 Prusa developers, as well as some really knowledgeable and hardworking members of the community, can't seem to crack what this is. No one can agree whether it's hardware or software, or related to heating or related to filament. There's so many different things that it could be, and it's quite fascinating watching people and their lateral thinking as they come up with ways to eliminate variables and try and cross off things from the list. Personally, I'll be sitting back and checking up every so often to see if there's any advancements, and hopefully when it's cracked, a firmware update will be released, or if it's a mechanical or hardware issue, some sort of fix will be released, and everyone can go back to being happy with their printer and getting the best results possible. I hope you found this video informative and interesting comparing the artifacts found on the vertical walls of a number of different printers. I'd love to see in the comments if you would post below, do you own this printer? Are you having this problem? What's your opinion on the matter? Thank you so much for watching and until next time, hopefully happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.